Welcome to part two of Plinko Coding Challenge. I actually just, during the little break I just took between part one and part two, I made a quick list with help from the chat. Here's the things that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna increase the gravity of the world so that things don't look so sluggish as they're falling. I gotta make sure I delete any particles that leave the window, although at some point I'm gonna put boundaries. So actually, I might hold off on that because I was gonna add boundaries around the whole world so that they can't leave the window because the idea is to fill up the buckets at the bottom. But uh, um, then I, uh, and then I wanna add buckets at the bottom to fill those things up. And then I actually might make this a part three. Let's see if we can add a little bit of sound with say, as they hit the things, this little like ding, ding sounds or whatever. Maybe I can record the bell really quickly and use that sound. Okay. Uh, so let me look over here and see what I can do. So gravity, is part of something, so there, conceptually there's a world and there's particles and there's plinkos. Gravity is not part of a plinko or peg or a particle, it's part of the world. So I can actually look here in the console and I can just type world to look and see what the properties of the world are. There's bounds, which is something I wanna look at, which has a maximum and a minimum X and Y, whoops, which is, ah, I clicked the wrong thing. Come on, click again. You can see those are infinity, because I haven't set any bounds. And then there's gravity, which has a scale. I don't 100% know what that is. I should look it up in the documentation, but I have an X and a Y. So one thing I can see is the Y is one right now. I can actually just say world.gravity.y equals two. So let me double the Y so it points down a little bit more. And you can see, can you see that that's moving? Let's just make it more extreme just so you can really see. Let's make this 10. And you can see that gravity is so much stronger right now. So that's kind of useful in terms of getting things to fall a bit more. Okay, so changing the gravity to two, I'm gonna leave it for that right now. The next thing on my list over here was add bounds. And there is a thing in the world object in addition to gravity called bounds, but I'm not gonna use that. That's more, I think, for where you're doing collision detection. Instead, what I'm gonna do is just add some um, objects myself. So I'm gonna, yet again, I'm gonna just, from particle.js, I'm gonna do a save as, and I'm gonna call this a boundary boundary.js, I'm gonna make an object that has a x, a y, and a width and a height. It's going to be, and this should be a, a boundary. And it has, it's, it is something that's uh, static. And instead of making a circle, it's going to be a rectangle. Again, I'm doing a lot of redundant code here, but, and then I'm gonna keep track of the width and the height in separate variables. And um, I'm gonna uh, say uh, boundary.prototype.show, and this should be a rectangle with a width and a height. So what I've done very quickly is show you how you can create a rectangular body by using bodies.rectangle, keeping track of width and height instead of a radius. Otherwise, everything else is the same. Ah, I need to add rotation at some point. Don't let me forget, because these things are rotating as they're moving around. Okay, so for this, what I'm gonna do just really quickly is I'm also going to make an array, call it bounds, and I'm going to, at the end of setup, just put one at the bottom, var uh, b equals a new boundary, and so the rectangle is actually thought of uh, based on its center, matter.js, so I'm gonna say width divided by two, it's going to be at uh, height, um, and I'm actually gonna like push it off. So what I want is its location to be at height plus 50 because I want its uh, width to be the entire width of the window and I want its height to be, if it's plus 50, I want its height to be like 100. So it's actually not gonna show up on the screen. But, and I'm, oh, boundary's not defined because of course I forgot to add it to my index.html. So I have another JavaScript file, come on, uh, boundary.js, here we go. And boundary is not defined in setup. So what am I missing here? Um, new boundary, ah, what did I, probably boundary, 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 that looks right. Uh, index.html, I've got boundary.js, sketch b equals new boundary. Hmm. Let's try that again. <laughs> Syntax error, line number three, boundary.js. Sorry about that. Uh, is static true? Ah, there should not be a semicolon there. Creating an object in JavaScript, you separate the properties with commas, with only one property. I don't even need the commas. Okay, apologies for that. And here we go. So now what we should see is, I gotta wait a little while, but when the ball falls to the bottom, there you, go, you can see that. It's, there's now a boundary down there. So that's perfect, that's what I want. Um, and I, I, I guess I'm not gonna make this 800 because it's, um, 
kind of going off a little too low down. So let's just make this uh, 600 by 700 just to push it up a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, another thing that I could do here is if you notice every other, yeah, I don't know if this is really necessary, but it does feel like there should be another particle right here, another peg right there. So that is the odd row. So in the odd row, uh, what if, well, what if I just did this? Would anybody really care? Yeah, that's fine. There's an extra one also for the even ones. I could be more thoughtful about this, but that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so we've got the stuff falling down and landing in the bottom. Okay, I definitely need to do something. I was wrong. Uh, I do want to delete particles that fall off the edge because maybe they're not all going to end up in the bottom. Um, so I should add something where I check if anything is way off screen to remove it to kind of keep things more efficient. So let's add that next. And what I need to do to do that is I need each par particle is the only thing that's moving. So I'm going to say particle dot prototype uh, dot um, off screen equals a function. And I'm just going to say um, what makes it off screen? If x return x is less than 0, that's, let's, let's say x is less than negative 100, uh, not x. OK, so first of all, x equals this dot body dot position dot x. So that's actually the object's location. It's the body's positions x. Right? Physics, the physics engine matter.js is controlling everything. y equals, and you know what, I kind of wanted to make a nice if statement that I just return a, a Boolean, not an if statement, a nice Boolean expression that returns true or false. Let's just make this simpler. If x is less than negative 50 or x is greater than, I'm just going to use a buffer of 50, y plus 50, uh, then return true. Uh, else, and I'm doing this in a radically inefficient way, but I don't actually ever need to check the top. So I can actually just say return. If any of these is true, if any of these are true, then it's off the screen. So I can use an or. Return the result of all of these. Or y is greater than height plus 50. I'm, I'm like hearing the YouTube comments already. Don't use a long-winded if statement where you could do it in one line of code. But this is like kind of cryptic to watch, to read. But if an or statement, if any of things in an or statement are true, like false or false or false or false or false or true, the whole thing is true, right? If I'm, you know, uh, you, you, yeah, okay. So if one of these things are true, the whole thing is going to return true. So now what I need to do is in this loop here where I'm dealing with all the particles, if particles index i dot is off screen, then I want to say particles index, uh, particles dot splice i comma 1. So I just did this in a matter.js tutorial earlier, I'll link to it, where I kind of went through the pitfall here, because I'm moving, taking things out of the array while I'm iterating through it. So really, a, a quick fix that I can do here is just um, that I what did in that video is I can just subtract one from i. Because the problem is if I'm removing the i element, the other elements slide into it, and then I add one, I end up skipping over it. So this is going to cause me not to skip anything, and this should remove anything that's off the screen. And of course, I have an error. Particles index i is off screen is not a function. Uh, why is it not a function? Particle, oh, I just called it off screen. Let's call it is off screen. There we go. So one thing I want to do just to be sure this is really working is let's not check, let's not check the bottom. Um, let's check, uh, let's check, you know, to see if they go over 100 pixels. So we should see them removed. Now, I did, uh, I forgot something really important. In addition to removing it from my array, I need to tell matter.js that it's not part of the physics anymore. So what I'm going to do, sorry, I'm having like a Groundhog Day deja vu thing. Uh, where I'm removing it, I also need to say, part of, uh, I need to say uh, um, particles, no, 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 world, world dot remove world particles index i dot body. I think that's it. So I want to tell the matter.js world, so I want to remove something from the matter.js world. The world function is namespaced in the world object. So world.remove from this world, which is my world, this particular particle's body. So take this out of the physics world, then delete it from the array, then go back one. So let's see if that works. Uh, so one thing, one way to check if this works, by the way, is now what I'm going to do 
is I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to remove it from my array, but I'm going to remove it from the physics world. So let's just take that out. This is a good way of debugging to see if it works. So let's see if after 100 the physics stop. So that, that actually did work. Did I get, I probably got like a weird, why did it, that's interesting how it stopped doing anything. But I can see plainly that this is doing what I want it to do. Um, I'm pretty sure this is right. Um, anybody, pretty, anybody tell, tell me if I've done something wrong, but I think I've got this in the right order and I can go back to my particle object and change this to like height. I don't actually need the height at all because I only care if it goes, because the, the bottom is, the bottom has a hard boundary. So I'm actually just going to take that out. I don't need that at all. So I actually don't need to check. I'm only going to check if it's off screen on the Y. Oh, something froze. Ooh, I crashed this particular, let's just see if this comes back and it works again. Okay, um, so this should be doing fine. I want to check, here's actually a way that I can check. So nothing's been removed so far. I can say um, particles.length. There's six right now. Um, particles.length, seven. Particles.length, seven. Come on, leave the world, people. <laughs> Checking if it's working. <laughs> Let me debug to see if this is really working. And I, I want to be uh, thoughtful about this. So, because I, I really want to make sure that I've done the code correctly. And I think this will show you a good way to debug this is what I'm going to do is actually completely take out all the Plinkos. So now I have to have this. Oh, look at that. Whoa. That's, oh, no, no. I got to do this. I, okay, now there's no Plinkos. Okay, so now that there's no Plinkos, and I'm also going to remove this boundary. And then I, I actually, unfortunately, now need to go back and add this y back in, or y is greater than height. So the way that I'm going to know that this works is, um, uh, put this back in. The way that I'm going to know that this is actually working is by looking at the length of the array. So particles.length is 1. It's never going to be more than one because by the time the next one comes, one's been removed. The question is, world.bodies is what matter.js thinks is there. Is that also one? It is. So things are working, right? Because if I took out my, um, if I took out this world.remove, if I didn't remove it from the matter.js world, I could look at particles.length and I'm going to continuously see one. But now there's going to be three in the world's body. So I need to make sure it's being removed from both places. So now that, now that I feel confident that that's working, I can put my boundary back in at the bottom and I can put the uh, Plinkos back in here. Okay, here we go. Now, looking at my list, what do I have left? I've increased the gravity, I'm removing particles, I added a boundary at the bottom, I need to add buckets. So what I want to do is just add some little separators here, and I probably want to align them right with that first, um, with that first uh, row. That probably is the way I'm supposed to do it, although I'm sure there's a specific layout. Okay, let's add those. So how many do those need to, oh. <laughs> um, let's add those. Okay, so what I need to do, those are also going to be boundaries. So I'm going to use that boundaries array, boundaries.pushb. And now I'm going to write a loop that's similar. I only need to do it for one set of columns. So let me say i equals, um, I equals 0, i is less than column. I want to do all these columns. Uh, and what I want to do is say the x is i times spacing. Right? That's what it is for. Um, Hmm. Let's just see. Let's see what goes on. Let me try. X is X is i times spacing. The y is the bottom. So let me think of a height here. I'm gonna. Those buckets are gonna have a height. They're gonna be rectangles that are gonna have a height of like I don't know. Let's just try like 30 pixels and a width of like 10 pixels. So the y is going to be if I want it to be a boundary that sits um, on top of the floor. The y is height minus h divided by 2. Because I need a rectangle. This is confusing. But basically, uh, if this is the bottom, this is my rectangle, this is its height, this is, this is the canvas's height minus height divided by 2 is this location here. So once I do that, then I can create a new boundary. 
And I'm reusing a variable name, which is probably a bad idea, but I can create another new boundary, which is at x comma y with comma height, because I calculated all that already. And I can also say boundaries dot push b. And the reason why I want to put it into an array is because I also want to say, um, I also want to display all of them. So for all the boundaries, uh, boundaries index i dot show. Now, what does the boundary show function have? It shows a rectangle. And let me, I have, uh, let me say fill 0, stroke 0. Let me get a different color here. And uncaught reference error. Boundaries is not defined at setup. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Did I not make a boundaries array? Oh, I called it bounds. <laughs> so that's nice because it's a little bit shorter. Of course, now I have to change it everywhere. So bounds.push, bounds.push, and then I need to loop through that bounds array. OK, there we go. <laughs> those are so tiny. Look at the tiny, I, I really, OK, so those are going to be, uh, have to be um, much <laughs> taller. I guess I wasn't really thinking. Uh, and I don't know why, Let's, they could be white. I don't know why I was like I had to change their color. So um, in the, uh, uh, where am I? Boundary, um, let me make the color white. And uh, here, let me color white. And then, uh, what am I doing now? On sketch where I create them, let's make the height 100. My goodness, why are we being so stingy? OK, does this, so, uh, and then I could use one extra one, right? I could use one extra one here. <laughs> I cut that off of my laptop. I could use an extra one. I could use an extra one. Um, so I already said columns plus one. Columns plus two? Wait, why am I not getting, oh, because it's, it's there, but it's right off the screen. No. Uh, so let me just offset it a little bit. Uh, 10 plus. Yeah, uh, let me just see. Uh, minus 10, just to offset it. Yeah, yeah, it's there. So I just, I have to finesse the spacing and stuff a little bit. Um, so I'm going to just leave it at that. Because uh, there's one, what I want is, but it should be at the center, right? So x is i times spacing. So x is 0, um, and the width is 10. So I should see 5 pixels on and 5 pixels off. What if I change this to 20? What, what am I doing wrong here? Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. I have, I'm not drawing it correctly. No wonder. <laughs> so I don't know if that, some of that thinking could be edited out. I need to move this up again because it's too low for me. Um, but uh, I forgot a really, really key thing. If I go into the boundaries, look at this. I'm drawing the rectangles in the default way that P5 thinks of rectangles with 0, 0 in the top left. And that's why they're actually so short. I'm just drawing them in the completely wrong place. Whereas matter.js thinks of rectangles with the registration point in the center. So I need to have, but I'm drawing match what matter.js thinks, which I need to say rect mode center. So here we go. There we go. So now it's right. And you can see, I, that's what I expected it to do. It had one sort of half off at the edge. So you can see here are my uh, Plinko things. Uh, let me just do this. Oops, no. Let me do this. So um, you can see it a little bit better. Uh, OK, let me make it a little bit um, wider. Uh, Sketch.js, just to give us some more uh, stuff to work with. 700, 800. Let's try that. There we go. So now let's take a look at this. Ooh, I, I did something weird. Oh, the spacing. <laughs> Never mind. Why did I change this? I, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back to what it was. OK. So here we go. Uh, Plinko. So this ends the second part. What I'm going to do is, um, what I'm going to do right now is take a short break, and I'm going to come back and add a few sounds to this. And during that short break, I might also, oh, one thing I really got to fix is look at it, it always goes to the left up there. And the whole point of this is for it to 50% of the time go to the left and 50% of the time go to the right. So I need to, I'm going to add a few features to improve this in the next video. You can think about maybe how you would do that yourself. And look at this, they're really, they're all landing basically in the same spot too. So I need to work on adding a little bit of randomness to allow for, um, for uh, things to change. Okay, so I'll see you in the next third part where I'm going to improve on this a little bit. See you there.